We begin tonight with President Obama blowing the lid off any notion of spending restraint in Washington with a brand spanking new $4 trillion budget. The plan is more spending and more taxes to pay for it. It's being sold as a blueprint to help the middle class, but nearly all the proposals are a retread of failed policies of the last six years. With us now to break it down, Fred Barnes, executive editor of the Weekly Standard and Fox News contributor, Dan Mitchell, senior fellow at the Cato Institute and the Heritage Foundation senior economist and Fox News contributor, Steve Moore. Steve, I will start with you. You know, it really is Groundhog Day, isn't it? It's like <laughs> tax, spend, repeat, tax, spend. You know, if Puxatani Phil were in this room right now, I think he'd run away and never come back. Well, what do you make of this $4 trillion budget? Well, you know, I'm old enough to remember, as uh, Fred is, when President Reagan used to release his budgets to the Democratic Congress. Remember, Fred, and they'd say, it's dead on arrival. Yeah. Well, th this, this budget it was dead before arrival because the president <laughs> told us what was going to be in this in his State of the Union speech. And there's, there's nothing in here that would appeal to any of the Republicans in Congress. They will drop this budget and hopefully move in a completely different uh, direction. There's higher taxes. The thing that I think I'm most concerned about is, remember, we have those budget caps that were set in the 2000s. 2011 Budget and Control Act. This would just obliterate those caps, run run right through them with 70 billion more spending. How many ways can you get it wrong? And Fred, uh, DOA, <laughs> is that what it should be? That's what Steve's saying. Well, I think he's right. And, you know, one of the things that's different this year is Congress always plays uh, a bigger role than the president in actually uh, fashioning the real budget that becomes law. And Republicans have control of Congress uh, in both houses now. So. Uh, they really they really do have a stronger hand. You know, I, what I wonder is, what do the American people think of this? You know, we had an election, right. the message of which was not uh, spend more and tax more. And then <laughs> if you look at the polls, only about 16 percent of Americans, there's a Rasmussen poll today that came out saying that 16 percent want to increase uh, spending. And then, of course, we, we get these spending caps that Steve was talking about. And sure enough, a couple years later, uh, well, the president anyway, and frequently Congress just says, uh, throws him out the window. So uh, we've got I, a long way to go on this one, that's for sure. Dan, uh -huh. you you had some you wrote interesting stuff about this budget. Uh, you were implying it was dead on arrival, but you know that's a nine percent. Four trillion is a nine percent increase over the spending that actually exists in this calendar budget or this fiscal budget year. Uh, where is the restraint, right? Where is the restraint? Eighteen trillion dollars in debt at the federal level. For you and me, that's about fifty thousand dollars per American, one hundred and fifty thousand for every taxpayer in America. What do you make of it? Well, it's not just that we have a huge increase in spending in Obama's budget between 2015 and 2016. You look at the 10-year numbers, and he's increasing government more than twice as fast as inflation. Now, I agree uh, with Stephen Fred that some parts are dead on arrival. The class warfare tax hikes and, and capital gains, increased death tax, that stuff won't happen. But I am worried that there are still mm. some Republican big spenders right. in Washington who might strike a deal with Obama to get rid of those spending caps. And all that those spending caps do is they simply limit how fast the discretionary spending can grow. There's no cuts required at all. It just says you have to at least not increase spending faster than the private economy. Well, uh, Steve, to you, you know, the Republicans mm. have been talking for a long time about corporate tax reform. We've got to do something. Now, the president's version of that is that we increase taxes on corporations overseas. Yeah. What's going to be the net effect of that? Just when you think that the uh, corporate tax couldn't get any worse. <laughs> Jerry, the on the way to do it. So he actually would put place a, I believe it's a 14 percent tax on right. money that's uh, stored overseas in these accounts. If you do that, then what's going to happen is that all these multinational companies, they won't be American companies any longer. They will be British companies right. or Irish companies that's or Chinese view. companies. So, by the way, why don't we just give every company a 5 percent tax holiday, bring that money back to the United States, raise some money, bring the jobs here uh, rather than tax oh. them and, and lead the companies See, out. See, there you out go, out being US. logical again. Again. Fred, I have to get you, though, to the president wants to take this money from the corporations and spend it on building bridges and roads, <laughs> half trillion dollars. But I seem to recall some shovel ready projects that weren't quite shovel ready. We tried this before. It didn't work. <laughs> Even the president finally admitted there was no such thing as a shovel ready, uh, ready project. But, you know, he look, he, this is the kind of spending he wants to do. There's one word that's always missing from the president's vocabulary when he releases a budget or actually the rest of the time, too. And that word is incentive. That there are never any incentives to uh, produce uh, growth and jobs where it really comes from. And that's uh, the private economy. 
everything he wants to do is just uh, done by <laughs> government spending, whether it's roads and bridges or whatever. He wants to have, in other words, to give the government a, a, a complete control um, and, and to give it the, uh, the private sector no incentives at all. Well, I, I want to have a little fun with you guys. <laughs> I, I forced my senior producer to watch Bill Maher, uh, so I don't have to. But he said something that I knew would get under your skin. Here's Bill Maher. And no one is telling the truth, which is that the large, thriving middle class that America used to have didn't just appear out of the blue. It was created using an economic tool called socialism. All right, guys, Dan, true. Look at Steve laughing. If you go back Quickly. to the 1800s, when we went from agricultural poverty to middle class <laughs> prosperity, total government spending was only 10% of GDP, and the government was just 3% of GDP. We had no income tax. Obama's budget is a recipe to become Greece, not a recipe showing how social, yeah. socialism I was gonna, makes us richer. Steve, go. I, I was just going to say, the only socialists <laughs> left in, in the world are the European leaders, Cuba, and on HBO. <laughs> and, there might and be President another Obama. network out there. Fred, you go ahead. Look, I'm sure President Obama agrees with Bill Maher. He just won't say so. Uh, <laughs> but it's the same thing. Higher taxes, more spending, and, and more government control. And more government control. Guys, you did a great <laughs> job tonight. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Fred, Dan, Thanks, and George. Steve, appreciate your time.